have relied on only a certain segment paying uh, direct taxes. Indirect taxes, of course, most people are paying. Uh, that is like the VAT and all, whether is your rich or poor is immaterial. If you are buying the goods, you are paying the tax. For years, when we get used to a particular way, uh, don't you think it's a bit difficult <laughs> to change it overnight? But we have to realize everything has a cost, and that cost that has now come to bite us. the moment i think one of the biggest issues is cash flow so we have to get get into uh, how we are going to improve the cash flows in order to get the economy kick started and moving forward so in that sense i think we have to gain access to the global markets whether it's a bilateral uh, creditors or the international markets the isp markets so we have to get access to that so our credibility today as a country is uh, zero in that sense because we have virtually got uh, default status at the moment. So we have to get out of that trap first. So I suppose one strategy which they seem to be following is to go to the IMF. Uh, the IMF itself is not going to give a large sum of money, some two point something billion uh, dollars over four years. So if you really break it down, you are going to get some 700 million dollars in a year, which is nothing because it might meet our oil bill for about a couple of uh, months, I think that's about it. So it's not it's not really the money that we are looking at from IMF, it's really to first get out of this default state and, and the credibility to come back, which then we can go into the, to negotiate something with the bilaterals and things like that. That is one side of the equation. Second side of the equation is that we have to clearly increase our exports. But that again is a more medium term because it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, in that, there are two, three things that we have to do. One thing is uh, we have to find new products. We are sticking to our standard traditional products, right? Uh, the coconut rubber, now garments, the traditional. But we have to expand that suite of uh, products. So that is one, one issue. Uh, the second issue is, uh, I think a lot of people are not talking about is, I believe that import substitution is also a method of improving the cash flows. You increase exports and increase the inflows, or you you reduce the outflows by by doing local production, which which again we haven't uh, really uh, done that. So these are things I think we have to do on, on from a country point of view. Uh, first thing is to get this negativity out and try to get into the markets and try and try to raise money. Uh, and then, at the same time, address some of these other problems as well. I think as a society and a nation, I think we have to realize that everything comes with a cost. There are no free lunches. Now, that is a part which we haven't, uh, I, I don't think society generally accepts. Because for years, we have got such a lot of free things. E e even for us, right, we, we don't, we take it for granted. Our electricity, when we buy it below cost, now none of us have taken, even the people who can afford, uh, are getting it below cost, right? So that has now been taken for granted. So now when that goes up and tries to come up to the cost levels, we, we are reacting to it, saying that this is an additional burden. So, so taxes or something like that. Uh, for years, we have relied on only a certain segment paying uh, direct taxes. Indirect taxes, of course, most people are paying. Uh, that is like the VAT and all, whether you are rich or poor is immaterial. If you are buying the goods, you are paying the tax. To so some extent, they have been paying tax, but the direct tax has been only from a select few, if you want to call it that. As a result, the others have assumed that whatever they are getting, all this public uh, good that they are getting, they are anticipated that it is coming without a, a cost as such. So for years, when we get used to a particular way, don't you think it's a bit difficult <laughs> to change it overnight? But I think as a society, we have to realize there is nothing free. Everything has a cost and, and it's it's that cost that has now, after, I don't know, 50 years, 70 years or something, it has now come to bite us. I'm not too sure whether IMF going forward will have what much more conditions coming in. I think we are taking bulk of the pain now because they have, that's why they have put those as preconditions. Uh, they know that once the money is given, putting conditions are never going to work. 
so because you are not going to follow that but so i think that's where the preconditions are coming in uh, but saying that there may be certain things that will come through because i am also has got a program so they have saying that you do certain things today and then they have some projections and based on those projections they believe that the country will get into a stronger footing but if some of those things don't happen then you may have to tweak tweak those assumptions and then uh, bring in some other uh, different you know uh, directions so so it might happen but to me by and large a good part of it has happened uh, or it's happening at the moment the biggest challenge will be the political will to carry this out so already you can see in the newspapers and all various people are saying we should have done it differently we should have negotiated hard all sorts of talk is happening so whether it it, it can deliver or not is a question then i hate to say this but then then politics will set in and then some politician will say no we need to give the benefit to the people and then go and undo some of the things that have been done now and we'll be back to square one apparently we have gone to the imf some 17 times and none of those none of those targets have ever been met so if you go by history this will also go that down that road but unfortunately we have a society who gets carried away what people say and no one analyzes to see whether what they say can be achieved tomorrow if some fellow comes and says your taxes are going to go down i am 99% sure what will go right but so this is what happened in the last two years what they say is that they brought down the taxes uh, none of us questioned how is the government going to Uh, bridge the gap that is going to be created by reduced taxes so no one no one really uh, asked that question so did did anyone ask when you paid less taxes uh, should i be paying this low taxes or should i pay more or no one did right so so that's the problem so that's a, I, i suppose it's partly human partly i think uh, it's sri lankan attitude also because we have got too used to getting things free or at discounted rates or everything actually we are into several services this environment that we are in today i think is quite ripe for fraud to take place because you have the uh, motive people are suffering uh, they don't have enough money to probably uh, spend on things that they have already got used to so that the motive is there right then also the systems which prevented fraud to happen has also got relaxed because we are operating under difficult operational conditions right so sometimes when you go to buy something now during this uh, trouble times uh, you couldn't have bought it at the rate that uh, you had originally agreed so now the question is you have to buy it because you have to keep the business running so the systems have also broken down third factor in this whole equation is that people start justifying their actions they will turn around and say uh, yeah in these bad times even you are you are entertaining your guests so if you can entertain guests me taking a few thousand rupees here and there uh, can be a can be wrong so these three elements are there so so e why uh, we have what is called forensics and uh, dispute resolution services where we help clients to see whether their systems uh, one is where the gaps are and see whether the, the, the I told you the second one you can have the motive but if your systems are preventing people from exercising or realizing those motives then that's a that will reduce your fraud so that's one one type of services then as you know increasingly clients are moving to a strategies of digitization they are using digital channels to get their system workers to start working so then we are exposing ourselves to cyber crime Singapore has the largest amount of cyber crime because they are heavily digitized. So so we'll be exposed to some of those risks, right? So again we have services which basically addresses that. This is apart from our standard service of uh, audit, tax and uh, consulting, the specialized services we have. Then for like SMEs and uh, smaller companies, one of the critical issues today is going to be working capital management. As you know, market is getting tough. collections are becoming difficult so the question is it's not about selling it's about selling and collecting your money also so working capital management is going to be capital key uh, that is whether it's inventory whether it's letters whatever it is because take inventory 
if i was an import company and i had an item one item costing 1 dollar right i only need the 200 uh, rupees to hold it today that same dollar i will i need 360 rupees now my financing becomes a problem so we have the ability and capabilities of helping industries to see where these uh, issues are and uh, come up with strategies how to tackle them so that's on working capital management then you know things like on inventories do you go into just in time inventories rather than stock stock uh, pile because that's going to cost you money and that 36% or 30, 30 plus percent interest of financing this inventory and debtors businesses will struggle so sometimes making people understand that you have a problem is i think the biggest issue a lot of people think i don't think they are focusing on this they will start focusing when they get into trouble and the cash dries out we are good in our financial management uh, and and capital raising part so one of the strategies the government is trying to do is sell off the so called silver so so we have the necessary expertise to help to convert these entities to a sellable model and try to bring in uh, necessary investors to invest in these companies so that that uh, what we call transactions uh, support we, we have then from from the audit front also which i didn't touch on is that these are times where businesses need credibility so the financial reporting becomes a critical factor when you want to raise capital so you have to go and ask an investor potential investor can you bring me more money into the company or whatever it is so this is all based on the credibility of the information given to them so the audit practice basically enhances that credibility and also these are difficult times right at the moment even for accounting because there are so much of uncertainty that is a uh, prevalent how you deal with those uncertainty and then reporting on that becomes a uh, becomes a critical factor and that's where i think uh, firm like concern young has the necessary expertise and the depth to address some of these things so that there is credibility in the we maintain that credibility and the trust in the market so going forward uh, what we will have to do is that uh, as a organization we i think are placed uh, in order to support this uh, recovery activity of of the country which i believe uh, not only uh, in sending but the accounting sort of uh, fraternity will also uh, will have to play a critical role because a lot of these things are uh, i think uh, stemming from bad financial management so if they if they did it properly uh, we we may have sort of avoided some of these pitfalls but but anyway we are there so now we need to see how we can get through get through this uh, difficult time and but we have the necessary expertise so we have two things one is we have access to global our because we operate in several countries so we have firms uh, all over those places we have access to clients and investors so we we can leverage on that network uh, so that's one of the key features of virtuine the other side is that we also benefit from experiences what they have say for example what greece went through we have a firm in greece there so they will share so currently also we are trying to do some work we are getting uh, expertise from overseas where countries have un- un- gone through this kind of uh, difficulties so that's what we can bring to the the market as it were and uh, the domestically also yeah in the policy formulation and all that we do tend to get involved but we are also mindful that we don't want to get involved in politics if it is professional advice yes certainly we are willing to do that but not to uh, sort of uh, to be with some party or the other for their benefit i, I don't think that is our historically we have steered away from politics and i we think that we should continue to do that we are a professional firm we should address the problems professionally and give professional solutions